This college basketball picks edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, Virginia, and Arizona for boosted parlays to in game odds on every major sport. WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a $1,000 risk free sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit WYNNBet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by Better Fantasy. Better Fantasy is a free to play app that lets you bet on all your favorite NFL player props for a chance to win awesome prizes. Download the app today over at betterfantasy.com slash SGPN. That's betterfantasy.com slash SGPN. We're also brought to you by PropSwap, America's marketplace to buy and sell sports bets. Use promo code SGP on your first deposit to receive up to $500 in bonus cash. Head over to PropSwap.com or download the PropSwap app today. We're also brought to you by SoBet. Sign up to bet against your friends and join the social betting revolution at SoBet.io slash SGPN. That's SoBet.io slash SGPN. And of course, don't forget to download the SGPN app, your home for all of our free picks and podcasts. Welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I am Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan real money Kramer. What's happening? Kram dog. We're here to talk about college basketball, Sean mm. on this uh, dark, dark black Monday. Oh wow. Rest black. in peace to all the, the coaches who have lost uh, their, their form of living today. Congrats. Hopefully they Joe can judge lives to see another day. Uh, hopefully they can feed their families um, for, for now. Knock on wood. If you're with me, the time don't want to don't want to lean into the Joe judge. The time off will probably give them time to work all on their right. walk, work all on their right. looks, fix those bags under their eyes so they can compete with this side of the table, AKA team. Good looking. Although Colby didn't get the memo today. Colby wearing a uh, Colby Dant, the Dant base joining us in the studio, rocking a uh, Pittsburgh Pirates hat. What's happening, Colby? Always was a Pirates fan, man. You know, I know it's the college basketball show, so uh, let's talk. We got Pitt Panthers on here, so that that fits, right? Oh yeah, Pitt Panthers <laughs> on the sheet. We got, uh, I mean, oh Jesus Christ, so many games to break down. Coming off an insane heater, I felt like our mojo was a little off for the regular season. Uh, you know, similar to the first half unders, maybe you know, took us a little while to get used to all the regular season college basketball picks. But man, uh, what a what a heater we were on on our last college basketball show. I went eight and two against the spread. Colby went eight and two against the spread. Kramer hit his lock. Dog and uh, I mean, I can't speak for the team. Twenty two and eight overall. Five and one with the locks. Uh, I was the only one. I got my bonus lock wrong. Wow, it was a it was a heater. I mean, that was one of the most fortunate beats I've ever <laughs> I've ever had. Hey, I was I I was about to walk out the door, and I go, you know what? I'm gonna watch this last shot. Chat goes up, doesn't go in. Uh, you know, Miami has the ball with 14 seconds left. Up Syracuse seven, right? up seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I'm getting two points. I'm like, all right, I'm out of here. And then I checked the phone later. I'm like, holy shit! How did I win that? It was uh, it was amazing. Cole and Swider, this is how you won that. The Villanova transfer just hitting a couple big threes. I still do like this Syracuse team. We'll see how it shakes out. But that big man Edwards is uh, he's fun. And with like the Bayheim brothers running some pick and roll, I'm a little worried about the younger Bayheim. I mean, when he airballed a free throw, that is not that <laughs> that's not the kind of Bayheim action. I haven't I'm seen a white guy airball a free throw since coach's son. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's this really is actually, 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 that's wrong. Chris Dudley, I feel like an air, airball free throw, but a guard. I haven't seen a, a, a white yeah. guy playing college basketball <laughs> that is a coach's son <laughs> airballing a free throw. Still like Cuse, though. I, I I always like them, and uh, they're gonna get right for the tournament. Look out! Mm. Okay. Oh man, win bet! College basketball regular season. You know it. March Madness right around the corner. You know 
We'll be getting down on some wind betting action. Obviously, the NFL. If you're watching this live on YouTube, still time to get down for the college football national championship. Not the real national championship. We will be streaming that in a couple hours as the Sims do their business. But yeah, uh, massive win on win bet. Of course, you bet big, win bigger. Someone in New Jersey on win bet risk of a thousand dollars. They had a two leg parlay on the Jags money line and the Chargers Raiders going into overtime. That paid out one hundred and sixteen thousand dollars. Oh man, win bet making dreams come true. W I N N B E T dot com. Oh man, I could listen to that all day. And uh, got why do you take it away, Kramer? From us? I'm I'm mad. Right in the crescendo. How did we not? We kept talking about how chaos could ensue. How we were we? I gave out Jags money line. You were you you know uh, bullied me into it. You coaxed me into it. Suggested it. How and did, then how, how do we not? Thing? How do we not come up with this parlay? This is a true DGens only parlay. We should have been on. But uh, shout out to that guy. Wow. Hundred K. Yeah, That's I mean, nice. I, it's, I, I think you don't, you don't, you don't often see the uh, the three way result parlayable with yeah. uh, another God game. Win so. bet for offering that. Uh, you know, that's that's the kind of uh, betting inventory you should be looking for as you select your betting partner, Sean. Exactly. Oh, wow, that was the off the all off the cuff. All right, we got a bunch of games kicking off January 11th, starting nice uh, early West Coast tip to a clock, make things interesting in the studio here. USC Stanford tipping off in Palo Alto. Right now, now are these uh, Kramer lines or what? What lines are we using? I was. These are all Kramer lines. Okay. I'm actually in the process of trying to see if we have any at real life lines. We try out and there. guess the win bet lines, but again, we are getting these to you guys as early as possible. Right now, Kramer's listing USC minus seven as they head to Stanford. Uh, USC pretty good defensively, holding opponents 35 and a half percent from the field, third in the country. Uh, although they've struggled in Stanford, one and five straight up, last six in Stanford. Stanford also very good at home, won their last six here. Seven feels a, a hair high for some Pac-12 basketball. I'm I'm taking Stanford and the points. Colby, what are you doing here? I think the concerning factor here is that Stanford hasn't played a game since before Christmas because of COVID. Yeah. They've been um, on a little bit of a layoff. Well, and and what? Let's get to it because that literally uh, hitting refresh lines are opening right now. Uh, five and a half is the number. See, I knew Ooh. it was going to come down. I knew seven <laughs> was high. Well, and what did we say earlier uh, that we were discussing this exact thing? Uh, I think I told Colby. I think it's so, it should be somewhere between five and seven. We went bigger because uh, of of that re of of what's going on. So maybe so they aren't factoring that in, and then maybe we should. You know what? Yeah. Then we're, we uh, yeah USC we, five and a half at seven. I'm going Stanford. I five agree. and a half. I'm I, going USC. I completely agree. It sways my pick. Um, uh, U, USC got to play a game. They got to play Cal because USC had some COVID problems as well. But they got a game in against Cal last Thursday. Got that win by 14 in Berkeley. Um, so I think you know, the play is USC. USC is the more talented team. They've played m- much more recently. So I will take the Trojans and lay the points. Even though, are you nervous about? Hey, this is the highest USC has been ranked since the seventies. No, and they've been lurking. Whatever's yeah. going on, somehow they're doing it quietly. Like yeah. it, it is true. Like the benefit of being in the Pac-12 and being like the other school in UCLA's town, I guess, is no one seems to give yeah. a shit about the football program, even at USC. Uh, you ask students at USC right now. And they would, they yeah. would, they would be Lincoln confused Riley? what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lincoln Riley. And last point here is Stanford has no home court. So, you know, you can't give them too much for that. All right. Now, uh, triple lock here on USC minus five and a half. South Carolina, the Gamecocks heading to Knoxville, Tennessee. Tennessee Lane, 14 and a half. That is a big number, but obviously, Tennessee, a much better team. Uh, should should uh, you know shut them down uh, defensively? South Carolina not a pretty good rebounding. South Carolina though, uh, obviously kind of a bit outmatched. Three and twelve straight up last fifteen games on the road. Two and sixteen straight up last eighteen games playing in Tennessee. Uh, I hate the, I hate these like big spreads completely outmatched. What are you doing here, Colby? Well, you shouldn't hate this because look, we took Ole Miss 
Yeah, Tennessee getting 16. That game went to overtime. Ole Miss probably should have won the game outright, but Tennessee got the win in overtime. That was a pretty easy. Uh, yeah, I mean, like you're saying, the game went to overtime. It is this another inflated line? Yes, because look, South Carolina, they've had COVID issues. They had to play several games with like five or six guys. So I actually think they're a lot better than their record indicates. I will take the points with the Gamecocks. Fade Rick Barnes is back on. Yeah, I think that's you know that's one of the 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 pillars of betting college basketball. We also, as we discussed this game this morning, no need to change it, Chunk, because my line is the actual. Really line. nailed it. Um, I told Colby I think the pure number is bigger, but Colby uh, 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 alluded to the fact that a lot of the situational stuff. Let's bring it down, Colby. And he's taken South Carolina. South yeah. Carolina defense travels. Uh, I think t- to your point, the only concern here is that we're we're facing. I think this is a, a slightly deflated line based on what just happened with Tennessee, but I'm with you guys. Let's fade Rick Barnes. Rutgers heads to state college, Pennsylvania, Penn state laying four against the uh, Scarlet Knights here. Uh, I don't know. Penn state. I want to hop on board, but they, man, quick they update, don't look at me. three and a half, three and a half. Okay. Uh, God, I'm so good at this Rutgers four and one against the spread the last five against Penn state. Uh, not expecting this game to be much of a shootout. I'm leaning. I'm leaning Penn State, although Rutgers has kind of had their number. Colby, what's the play? Um, well, look, Penn State had had an impressive two wins there against Indiana and battling back from seventeen yeah, you're against right. Northwestern. They looked pretty good. Played Purdue tough. If Purdue's as good as what people think they are, that's. that's I was not trying a to make a loss. case for Penn State tournament talk, and you were said, "Well, if they beat Purdue here." I think that the concerning thing is Rutgers hasn't been great on the road. Yeah. Um. You look at their last four true road games. It's DePaul loss, UMass loss, Illinois loss, Seton Hall loss. I'm gonna continue to ride that trend. Give me Penn State minus. You're talking points. me into Penn State. Kramer? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, last thing I would say is the the road games combined with the fact that they they're not exactly banging down their free throws. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll lean I'll lean Penn State. Although I think the size it's an interesting matchup. I think the size could be trouble for Penn State. But I'll, I'll uh, once again Cox. agree with you guys. Trouble dealing with the length. I uh, you, you know some serious check. Actually, you know what? Give me the give me the team from Jersey. Fuck you. Ooh, ooh. wow, Ryan you might have a Jersey team. The numbers are right, but you know, Texas Tech Baylor square off all the way down in Waco, Texas. Baylor laying nine and a half. Baylor again undefeated uh, this year so far. Texas Tech though playing a uh, pretty good defense, uh, only letting up fifty eight points per game on thirty seven and a half percent shooting. Texas Tech five or zero oh and five in the in the last five games straight up in Baylor. You know, Baylor's been undefeated for a long time, but I think Texas Tech coming in here playing some good defense. I'm going to take them and the points. You know, the, they're heading down to Waco. I think they'll get up for this game. Colby, am I crazy? Well, I have uh, I have good news for you. Sure. I'm going to give you a couple more points cuz the, wow. the the real number is 12. Well, I okay. think I yeah, think give me 12. S- some Let's of go. that line might be we don't know the status. Texas Tech, shout out to Texas Tech for on Saturday pulling off a nice home upset on the Kansas Jayhawks without their top two players. Terrence Shannon Jr., Kevin McCuller, both of them were out of that game. I I think probably the reason why the line's bigger than what we think it is Kramer is because probably the uncertainty knowing that if they're going to play in Waco or not. So for that reason, I think I think you got to lean Baylor at the moment. I would wait. I'd wait until you know if uh, Terrence Shannon Jr. is going to play. But uh, in, until otherwise, give me Baylor. Yeah, and this was a game where I think we disagree. When we went making the lines, uh, pulling back the curtain, uh, I think you disagreed. You like Texas Tech. The only reason we didn't make it uh, bigger, I think I wanted to make it like Baylor minus fourteen or something like that. So. I'll still ride with Baylor. Uh, so you and Colby Baylor, I'm going with the ba- Baylor's unbelievably good this year. Well, especially considering how much they lost, they're y- unbelievably. Yeah, I, they- I I watched a game, uh, not a full game, not too re- re- or not too long ago, and I mean, I I I've not seen a team I, like if they bring their A game, they're not losing a single game. I was telling Patty, see this, they are ahead of the curve on the scouting because it, look, it's not all recruiting. They they are like they will pluck guys from they Western Carolina. They got a system. They'll pluck guys from D two ranks, 
and they, it, it, they are just ahead of it. They kind of remind me of the San Antonio Spurs in basketball when they were just uh, killing it. You know, look at their guys. basketball yeah. program. Look at their football program. Like they they extract maximum value, and this team actually can. Pl- you know, this is a good team, so I see no reason why we would be fading the Baylor. DePaul Marquette. Uh, I'm I'm still staying on Texas Tech here. DePaul Marquette mm-hmm. in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Marquette really put it on uh, Georgetown. The other night, Ewing looked like uh, pretty pissed off. He sucks. The Georgetown Hoyas <laughs> suck. I they told need you to this fire. Earlier. It's yeah. like Chris Mullen at St. John's. It didn't work out. It's time to actually get a, a, a real basketball coach. I mean, never look, hire yeah. a former player who has his number in the rafters. It can Does only Juwan go. Does Jawan Howard have it in the rafters? I'm not sure. He he was part but, of the Fab Five. The bar, well, the bar yeah. is set so high with the former player. It's like, oh, we're gonna be back to Georgetown greatness. And so anything short of that is a huge disappointment. You, you know what it was? He's Patrick Ewing fooled a lot of people because he sat on a, lot, on a lot of NBA benches. He 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 had the quote coaching. You know he put in the time. Yeah, he's just not a good coach. No, but you know here's what you have to do. Like you look at the successful ones. Mike Woodson at Indiana seems like it's going to be successful. Juwan Howard, well, the first thing they did was w- they don't know the college basketball game that well. They've been in the NBA 20 years, hire a bunch right? of good assistants. Yes. Uh, Phil Martelli came into, to, uh, to Michigan. Thad Matta was uh, hired at, at, yeah. uh, at Indiana. If great, you're going to be successful, hire. you, I think you have to do that. Penny Hardaway is trying it. He brought in Larry Brown this year. We'll see how that works w- out. Works everywhere. I mean, I they're completely unrelated, but I saw Mac Brown just hired Gene Chiswick. So, you know, <laughs> always good to have good assistants around words, you. words of Chisdom. <laughs> yeah. Chisdom. <laughs> I, I'm all over Marquette here. I mean, maybe it was just cause uh, Georgetown's not that good, but I love what I saw out of that Marquette George uh Georgetown matchup. They're playing really good ball. Seven and a half at home against DePaul. Uh, I'm all in. Let's go. Yeah, nailed this one as well. It does seem like DePaul is getting uh, uh who's the Marquette coach? Shaka Probably. Smart. Shaka Smart. Uh Sean, you've said this too. Shaka, he's bullshit. That is true. You have said that. I'm gonna fade Shock. I give me DePaul. DePaul undervalued all season, I think. So yeah, let's c- continue well, that train. Th- that's the thing is they've lost every one of the biggest games. They were nine and one to start the season. They're nine and five now, but they're chippy. They've been in these games. I think this is one where the talent level is a lot closer. I'm gonna take the Blue Demons. Keep an eye on Javon Freeman. Liberty dude's a baller. Guys like are going that. down. Marquette. All right, now we head up to Syracuse, New York, where the Qs. Are laying eight against Pittsburgh? Ooh, I don't know. Uh, Pittsburgh, they've struggled scoring. They're one and eight on the road. Um, Pitts, uh, they have a player Oladipo. He's questionable with COVID. Uh, Cuse is seven and one against the spread in their last eight games in the ACC. I mean, they should just light them up. I I just get worried when Syracuse is laying a big number. I like them as a scrappy dog that no one sees coming. Uh, but I think Pitt's pretty bad. I'll 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 rock Syracuse minus eight. Colby, what are you doing? I got to take Pitt. I think Syracuse is the more desperate team here. Well, both these teams, I guess, are, are a bit desperate. But Pitt is better than their record. I made this case when I locked them up against Louisville. It's true. Uh, getting twelve and a half, they that that was an easy play. But if you look at how many close losses this team has, especially since November thirtieth, eight does feel high. Three but point loss to Louisville. One point loss to Notre Dame. Uh, they beat St. John's by two. They lose by four to Monmouth. They lose by one on a crazy buzzer beater to UVA. Uh, another buzzer beater to Minnesota. The team's better than what the record indicates. Give me Pitt plus the points. Q's get the win. Ooh, yeah, no, I think uh, Beheim is uh, three in a row, two on the road, coming home. Things get are gonna right. get, things are going to get right. Uh, yeah, th- this is a. Let's not forget Pitt's offense is horrible. Pitt also does not defend the three point line well. So. If Syracuse plays their game, I, I think Pitt's going to have a tough one in this. The one younger, later. younger Bam can uh, hit a goddamn free throw. Maybe you can. Maybe they can hire you as a part-time shooting coach. Sean uh, can knock down an 18-footer with the elbow best jumper. Yeah. Come on, let's go. All right. Uh, I feel like the Bayheims are more like uh, more like me though. It's all about the heat check. When it's on, it's on. When it's they, off, it's off. Ta- Ryan was n- notorious for going out of his way to take aggressive charges. Oh, sorry if I'm a team player. <laughs> he wanted charges to be an official stat that we kept in the rec league. Oh man, propswap.com. You're catching stats. You want to be uh what about the stats of getting the best price on a ticket? Propswap.com, where America goes to buy and sell 
real sports bets. Now is the time too. Uh, championships happening. I mean, you could still get down on that Georgia Alabama game. Obviously, NFL playoffs. There's a ton, a ton of uh, opportunities here. Look at this. Uh, got a guy named Steve. You might know a Steve from Tennessee. Last week sold his. He had a two hundred fifty dollar hundred to one Patriots Super Bowl ticket locked in for twenty five hundred dollars. That's a great price because the Patriots aren't winning the Super Bowl, so that thing is probably worth zero dollars. He got twenty five hundred dollars for it, and again, the guy, the person buying it, uh, got a better price than if he would have got it elsewhere. So head over to propswap.com and get that sweet deposit match. They will match your deposit up to $500 propswap.com promo code S G P also brought to you by BetterFantasy.com. BetterFantasy.com slash S G P N. You thought the fantasy football season was over. Well, it kind of is, but really better fantasy. Now that's the place to go to get in on all their free to play prop games. Again, you love betting props. Who doesn't love betting props? It's completely free. You literally cannot lose money. All you have to do is go to betterfantasy.com slash S G P N B E T T O R fantasy.com slash S G P N sign up for their free to play uh, prop games, stack up a lot of credits, cash them out for gift cards and other real prizes. Betterfantasy.com slash S G P N Miami, the U beating my cues. Now they had to uh, Tallahassee, Beating Florida. Duke at Duke. On yeah, Saturday. that was a yeah. huge win. Florida State, and the, they're not getting the respect maybe they deserve in this line. As Miami's a six-point dog, I, I could go both ways here. Is this a letdown opportunity coming off a couple big wins? Obviously, beating Duke is huge. Now they have a, a game against Florida State. You would imagine they would get up for, it, but are they are they smelling themselves a little bit after that Duke victory? Uh, Florida State has kind of owned them. They've won seven straight against Miami, but Miami's won nine games in a row. I, I'm gonna kind of ride the hot hand uh, and, and take Miami in the points, but I, I'm slightly worried about a letdown spot. Let me here give you them. an extra half point. It's uh, it's moved to six and a half while you were talking there. So wow, there you go. CLV um, closing line value. Well, Florida State was a team that had been a mystery all year. I, I was ready to put them on auto fade had they not beaten Louisville this Saturday. They did beat Louisville. They responded well. I still think though, Miami is just a flat out better team. They're a veteran team. The DePaul transfer Charlie Moore was was a huge get, and Cameron Mcguskey and Isaiah Wong are ballers. This team is good. I, I think the Hurricanes are just a flat out better team. Give me, give me the give me the Hurricanes. Wow! So you, it sounds like you might like them uh, on the money line. I, I do. As I a do. situational specialist and a motivational expert. That's the fear. Is that yes. for the Duke after winning in Cameron Indoor, right? Well, you have the emotional letdown of Miami getting that big win. You also have the fact that now they have to get up for uh, a cross state rival. Uh, we, t- we talked about when the Saints play the Falcons, they call it hate week. <clears throat> Similar thing here. I don't think Florida State is going to be sleepwalking into this one. I think they're going to roll. I think there's there's something wrong with them right now. And mm-hmm. I think they need Me to get too. right. I think this is kind of statement game that Hamilton, you know, a motivational expert himself is probably slamming the chalkboard. And you know, when it comes down to it, if you close your eyes and you watch them come off the bus, you're like, "Oh god damn, Florida State's about to whoop these boys." So, uh, I think uh, motivational side all the way, lay the points, Florida State. Yeah, I mean, I, think- I I am worried about the letdown, but six and a half, I could see them letting down and still covering that number. Iowa State heads to Kansas, square off against Kansas in Lawrence. Kansas laying ten and a half. Uh, Kansas eighty three points per game. That's insane. Hitting over fifty percent of their shots. Iowa State though coming in playing pretty good defense. They're holding teams at fifty eight points per game. Haven't played a team like Kansas uh, recently. Eight one and one against the spread. Kansas is uh, last ten in the Big Twelve Conference. I don't know. This just feels like a a spot. Kansas fucking rolls. I, I'm taking Kansas minus ten and a half. Yeah, I think that's what you uh, want to do there. It's chalky, but they're I, coming off of a loss, dude. Yeah. I mean, they they want. I'm sure practice that's has a, been. That's a great point. Uh, you know, pr- pretty pretty lit. When you're Coach a good been, team yeah. like this and you're coming off a loss, it adds a little spring in your step. 
It's a, it feels like a get right spot for Iowa State, similar to Kramer's angle in Florida State. Uh, and and Roy Williams will be in the house, legendary Kansas coach. I'm gonna lay the points with the Jayhawks. Yeah, I would expect, uh, and I'm seeing this already 11 and a half in some places. So you know, we can be honest, pick it at 11 and a half. I would expect this to continue to grow. And I would say by tip off, this will be a, a large Kansas by 14, Kansas by 15. Oh, miss. Oh man. Texas a and M. This should be a good one. Texas a and M only laying three and a half old miss. Like you said, laying a big number against Tennessee, very competitive in that game. Got it to overtime. A and M though, uh, you know, pretty decent offense, 77 points per game. Again, old miss own five straight up last five against Texas a and M on the road. A and M won six in a row. Old miss though. It, I mean, again, I watched a ton of that game against Tennessee. They look good. Texas A and M is now favored by four and a half. Colby, what what's your uh, what's your take? Is this a spot much like the Miami Duke spot? Ole Miss will beat Mississippi State on Saturday, and that, that's yeah. a, a huge it's rivalry a ahead, game. Yeah. And and so now you have the letdown spot. And they've been a mystery all year. They've been a hard team to understand. They'll, they'll go grab a nice win against Mississippi State or take Tennessee to overtime, but then lose to Samford at home. I'm going to take Texas A and M. I think your boy Buzz Williams with Tyrese Radford, the Virginia Tech transfer, and Marcus Williams, the Wyoming transfer. I think they're pretty damn good. They just beat Arkansas. Give me the Aggies at home. I'm going to lay the points. Yeah, I missed that on the handicap, but the lo- looking ahead to Mississippi State, that's how can you not do that? Give me Texas A and M minus four and a half. Kramer, situational god. Uh, I mean. I, I think well a couple of things here. This is a this is the kind of game that Buzz Williams wins, um, because he he has a motivational edge and and uh, I think being able to beat teams he was supposed to beat at home was kind of how Buzz Williams trans like it sounds silly but he helped transform the Virginia Tech program by doing just that like winning games you're supposed to win. And so when we were discussing this number, Colby thought it was shorter. I I thought it would be closer to five. Uh, it, it's coming out a little bit closer to to, to five. And, and I think the reason being is that they're probably scared. Like they're probably like, oh, the numbers suggest these are even teams. But the the bookmakers understand that this is a spot that Texas A and M is going to come out and roll. You want to talk about motivation? Go follow Buzz Williams on Twitter. That dude is all Get about you up. it. Like. Say what you will, like the dude has, is successful and has made shitloads of money coaching because he just grinds at it. Like he just grinds at the same effort shit over and over and over. So yeah, I mean, love Buzz Williams. Lay the points. I'm chalky today. I'm realizing I got a lot of favorites on the on the board. All right, Texas A&M minus four and a half. Everyone's on that one. Oklahoma, Texas in Austin, the Longhorns. Are favored by six, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm these are sorry. I was. I, I keep. I keep I saying know. the line, and then you correct it immediately. Well, I, 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 whatever. Yeah, I, my bad. These are good. They're from okay. here on out. They're live. They're live. You are looking live at the lines. Oklahoma at Texas. Uh, Texas, fifty-three points per game. That puts them number one in the country. One and four against the spread last five uh, when playing home games against Oklahoma. Oklahoma dealing with some COVID issues. Uh, I'm going Texas minus six. I know it's jockey Colby. Texas has been one of the biggest disappointments thus far in the college basketball season. I want to say they're one and three in uh, tier one and two games. Um, Shows you once again, like I don't care how good of a coach you are. It's tough in Texas, but uh, look, Porter Moser on the other side of things. I think he's a little bit ahead of schedule in uh, in Norman. They are third in the country in field goal percentage. Uh, so I'm gonna and they got the Groves brothers. Give me, give me, uh, give me the Sooners plus the points on the road. Oklahoma is one of the best jobs in college basketball. I, we were we we've had this conversation before, but they're never gonna care about basketball more. Yeah. But yet they're still invested you in still basketball. A, they have a bunch yeah. of money and you still get a bunch of talent. You get you you've had the like SEC top. basketball coach is really well, well in, in this case Big new, Twelve. New but, SEC but yeah. well, but in a way, like what makes this a great job is that it is a Big Twelve basketball job and you're not Kansas. So I, I think just I, I Porter Moser is a good coach too. Like I, I was kind of bummed when he when he took this job. Uh, I guess you know it was the job for him, but love getting the six points here. Absolutely love it. 
You guys are almost talking me into switching my Texas pick. Not going to do it. I, I just like Colby said, like it, there's something about being the coach in Texas, like a lot of pressure in this spot. We are, we're broadcasting live on YouTube guests in the chat. Colby, we got a question. The draft sports and history podcast username. What's the game with the most likely chance to be an upset tonight? <laughs> so obviously Monday night, most Ooh. people will be watching the so-called national championship. But if you are a diehard and God's eye will be firing up multiple screens, uh, hanging out with the great John, going to be watching. I'm sure we'll have some other college basketball. How many action. screens will be watching the simulated <laughs> tournament games? Yes. Um, I would say, I mean, I, I would look into uh, some of the bigger lines. You probably want to go with the swag. I mean, you, you take a look. I know this team's been terrible, and that is uh, Mississippi Valley State, right? Mississippi, Mississippi Valley State has been an awful team. They're one and twelve, but they just got their first win in overtime against Prairie View as like an eighteen point dog. Now they're heading to Texas Southern. Texas Southern's four and eight. I get it. They're, they're, I, they're much better, but I, at the same time. Wouldn't momentum is a thing. The swag has crazy games where I feel like a lot of these games are back and forth. So I would say that, or maybe you look at Western Carolina plus the nine or, uh, or on the money line there against East Tennessee state in the SoCal. Oh, come on. You could have just said, give me the beavers at home against the Oregon ducks, that, but that's only a five point line. You know, no, I wanted to give him some though. value. It's a dog. <laughs> Colby Colby was embarrassed by the size of his dog. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I love I'll, this fucking show and I love fucking Betty. I don't care how lo- how large my dog is. If it's a winner, it's a winner. And All she, and she knows that. Okay, yeah, it's not the motion of the ocean. Or wait, what is that? It's not the size of the ship. It's the motion of the ocean. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know that I've ever heard that yeah, one. We're like smooth that operators. One. That's the thesis. <laughs> Oklahoma State heads to Morgantown, West Virginia. West Virginia. And you lay in three and a half. Now we always say Morgantown tough to play and it's tough for some of these big 12 teams making the trip out to Morgantown. Does that apply here yes, Colby yes. to college basketball? A hundred percent. This place is sold out every time they play a game, but Oklahoma state is four and one against the spread last five when playing in Morgantown, West Virginia, obviously pretty good at home. Nine and zero straight up last uh, nine defense have been pretty solid for West Virginia. I mean, when in doubt, I, I I'm going to go with the historic coach. Give me West Virginia, but this is a horrible matchup for Oklahoma state. I think it's a horrible situation. They're going to turn the ball over. They're going to get turned over, Well, especially also coming off of Oklahoma state had struggled this year. And I think this past Saturday, they had a great, it put together a great game, beat Texas, the rivals that are leaving the big 12 sent them a nice fuck fuck you. I think it's a tough spot to come all the way in, in uh, on the road now and, and focus and be able to get it together against uh, West Virginia. It seems to be kind of flying under the radar too at 12 and two. Give me a huggy bear at, at home. Yeah. I mean, if I was going to make a game script prediction, this is a game where uh, they get to the line. West Virginia gets to the line and they just turn over okay. yeah. minus it's the, the line's too big though. I will say that this number is too large. Three They're, and a half even. I'm not going to go against it. I'm just telling you, they're making us pay a premium for this one. You're paying the huggy price. Yeah. Oh, here we go. The Iron Bowl of college basketball: Auburn, Alabama, in Tuscaloosa, where the uh, Fighting Elephants Lane Two. Uh, Auburn, eleven and four against the spread. Quietly, really strong. Um, both teams have been putting up a bunch, a bunch of points. Both averaging over eighty points per game. Alabama though, nice consecutive home win streak here. 17 and oh, uh, oh, rivalry game. I'm normally going to take the dog, but the dog is a little small here. I like both these teams uh, right now, except Alabama. We've seen their struggles on the road. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's chalky, but I'm taking Alabama minus two. I think they're back home. Yeah, and they're what, better coached. What a day for uh, I don't know. I mean, you got the the used car salesman down there in Auburn, but um, uh, yeah, don't fade that guy. Well, this could be a great a great day. You win the Invitational tonight for Bama mm-hmm. fans, and then tomorrow you take down uh, Auburn War in Eagle. college basketball. So I, look, I, I think Auburn's going to get them when they have to go to Auburn. I think this is they're going to split in the regular season. Bama's coming off of an embarrassing loss to the worst team in the SEC, Missouri. Yeah. So I'm going to ride roll tide. Although Auburn, I do think is, is the better team in the long run for the season. Don't you think Alabama is going to be a team where we see him ride some waves this year? 
Like we've seen them ride the high wave, and maybe this is the low wave because I think Auburn's going to come in, see a wounded animal that maybe has some confidence issues. Or like you said, they lost to the worst team in the conference, and this is a team that when you watch them play, they're a swag team, right? So if they're not confident, I wonder what's that going to look like. Give me the ultimate, the used car salesman of used wow. car salesmen. Uh, I, you know, when in doubt, take Chuck's team, and uh, you know Charles Barkley's spirit will be with Auburn. <laughs> no, I just, I mean, I would have made, I, I asked you, I said, would Auburn be favorite here? Because I wanted to make a minus one. Give me like three extra bonus points. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, you're, so you're going to buy that, uh, that old 82. Yeah. Uh, what Plymouth I, I've seen the movie transformers. <laughs> it, it, nice could it, it could be It could be bumblebee fully loaded. Right? Could, could be a fucking <laughs> space alien dude. <laughs> Providence heads to Omaha to square off against Creighton. <laughs> Creighton. Congo, enter Congo Creighton. talk. Right? Creighton is laying two and a half against Pro Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, Providence, 11 and 5 against the spread, 8 and 2 against the spread in their last 10. Both uh, pretty good defenses. Providence guard Reeves, questionable with the finger injury. Ah. Uh, I think you almost have to go. Uh, Did Creighton have a game between the the loss to Villanova, Colby? No, I don't believe so. Okay, so that loss against Villanova was their last game. Now they're coming home in a get right spot. Uh, I'm taking them coming off that loss uh, minus two and a half. Uh, I like your your thinking because Creighton at home is an yeah. animal. It's they, a different piece. Yeah, they that's are. a long trip from uh, Rhode Island. As Villanova finds out or found out this year, uh, in most years, I feel like that game at Creighton in Omaha. Anytime you got to go play these guys in Omaha, not only will it be lit, it is just a hard, hard place to win. Give me the Blue Jays to get it done. <laughs> even though Ed, I'm fading my guy Ed Cooley. I saw the Fairley brothers giving a Ed Cooley a shout out. Oh, really? They're big fans. Yeah, yeah, they're so, big, big yeah. Providence guys. I was always a big Andromeda strain fan, you know. Speaking of Crichton, tough to <laughs> defeat at home. Lay the point. Yeah, this is a pure home road thing. We're gonna take Crichton because uh, it kind of quiet, low key for a Big East road trip. Sean, East Coast boys out in Nebraska. You see those black clouds? That's a long ass fucking road trip. We don't talk about this enough, but I, I think we should start calling this the Morgan Town of the Big East. Dude, I'm telling you, this is one of the hardest places to win. Like, if okay, I know the everyone Ames thinks Duke. Beast. Everyone thinks you know. Yeah, there's like ten spots where you'd say, oh, it's hard to win in Duke or Chapel Hill or where you know, in Lexington. I actually think at Creighton is one of the hardest places in the country to win. So I, I'm all plus, over. Creighton. Yeah. Plus, yeah. I mean, he's responsible for making dinosaurs famous in this country. So. <laughs> Kramer, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm with, oh, I'm, you're with Michael, I'm with the dinosaurs and the disease. <laughs> All right. All right. Time for the lock dog and tease brought to you by sobet.io slash S G P N where you can go head to head battles. Uh, Kramer and I will be taking on some head to head bets. Mm-hmm. All you gotta do go to mm-hmm. sobet.io slash S G P N details coming soon, but you're going to be able to challenge us mano y mano with some bets. And that's why it's fun. I mean, social betting, it's me versus you. Very easy to connect a uh, third party uh, payment options as well. So bet.io slash as the social betting revolution. Kramer, you have the honors lock dog and a bonus lock. You want me to be the uh, college basketball specialist today? Well, let's, let's just make it easy for you. Lock motivation all the way. Give me Florida State. Dog. I don't have a ton of dogs, but. Yeah, you're that, War that, Eagle. No. I'm a big Porter Moser guy. Give me Oklahoma to win on the money line Ooh, against the okay. cross state rivals. That'd be a nice. What, what's that going to be? Like 175? Uh, maybe two to one. Yeah. Uh, and then for the bonus lock. As much as I love Baylor uh, as a, just a dominant team, uh, I I know that this is just a tailor-made matchup for us to take West Virginia lay the points mm. and watch them and that defense take care of business. Oklahoma State won't be ready for it. Minus three and a half for the Mountaineers. All right, uh, time for my luck dog and bonus lock. I'm kind of thinking. Maybe I'm getting a little cute here, but USC minus five and a half. Part of me just wants to 
once they have something to sweat out tomorrow at 2 PM. And I like that angle for my dog. I I've gone a lot of favorites here as well, but I'm going Miami money line. I, I know FSU is going to get up for it. I know I'm fading lock got uh, Kramer here, but I think the spot makes sense for them. And for my bonus lock, uh, give me the fight in Raptors Creighton minus two and a half for the bonus lock. Love the situation uh, against an East coast, Rhode Island team. Colby, what do you got for the people? Um, Let's go with the lock is Creighton minus two and a half. Man. Oh, st- at, at home at home. I just feel like I, I, I would take that all day. All you think day. a fryer yeah. even knows how to open a door? <laughs> it's um, taking real deep. Burn. I get you. I get you. Um, dog. I mean, you guys are taking my dogs, so I'm gonna try to be different. I, no, my, no, Miami you was no. Nah, let's go Miami. Let's go Miami plus six and a half, and the bonus lock. Miami money line, Colby. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, money line, and then the bonus oh. lock. Let's go with. Uh, well, damn, I don't want to do exactly Sean's. I did like that USC play, but let's go. Uh, Jesus. Let's go with the uh, WVU minus uh, three and a half in Morgantown. But you don't copy Sean, so you copy me. <laughs> I like your strategy. Uh, yeah. What? Wow. We have a yeah. There's a lot of lock crossing, but uh, hopefully that is uh, good luck for the sports gambling podcast. Make sure you guys leave us a nice uh, rating and review. Ryan's alarm is going off. Does that mean it's time to pick up lunch? Yep. Hell yeah. Porto's is coming. <laughs> uh, that is going to be tasty. You guys aren't eating that, but uh, you know what is tasty? Winning some free gear. All you got to do, leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Now you can just do a five star rating. Very easy. Send in the screenshot. You're automatically entered to win gear on Merch Monday. Tweet us at Gambling Podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the College Basketball Experience, hosted by one Colby Dant Dantabase. Go on on an incredible fire lock record. And again, daily free college basketball picks gas. You can't beat it. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast for the sports gambling podcast. So Sean stack in the money green and he is Ryan. I wonder what Colby keeps behind his paywall Kramer. <laughs> let it ride.